Hello everyone and welcome back and welcome back. Today we're going to discuss some of the dark secrets and shady practices it takes to make a massive fast food chain. So sit back and enjoy as we delve into the dark history of McDonald's. Hey Grimace, where you going? Just gonna soak up a little sun. Well, while you're soaking up a little sun, we'll soak up some McDonald's frosty thick shape. While researching this topic, I was so overwhelmed where to begin. There are so many things I knew I had already wanted to talk about, but was also aware of the intense and long history the company has. So I figured I'd start this video with a very hot topic that has been brought up a lot in more recent years, the chicken nugget. We all loved them as kids and all grew up to wonder just what is that thing? And then we thought we got our answers when we all saw the viral video of the pink sludge, which still gets referenced fairly heavily today. But we learned that wasn't true when McDonald's Canada released a fully documented process of how the nuggets are made, which is basically just ground chicken, meat, and seasoning. But something you don't hear a lot about in this process are the chicken farms. Birds used for McDonald's are among the most abused animals on the planet. McDonald's suppliers breed chickens to grow so unnaturally fast the birds often can't support their own bodies, causing constant severe pain. If humans grew at a rate similar to that of the commercially bred chickens, a 6 pound newborn would weigh 660 pounds after just 2 months. Their bodies are still developing but they can't take the strain of rapid growth. As a result, many chickens suffer debilitating deformities and broken legs which buckle under the weights of some birds enormous bodies. Some die of heart attacks never even reaching slaughter. Crowded in filthy dark barns, they are forced to sit in their own waste and breathe acid and ammonia that burns their eyes. In 2015, Mercy for Animals targeted TNS Farm and captured some very shocking things. Chickens being beat to death with spiked clubs or curb stomped were among some of the things recorded. The workers knew full well what they were doing also, with one outright asking the cameraman, You know what we're paid at, We all know him, even though he hasn't been a prominent McDonald's character in a long time, but do we know how he even started? While credited by McDonald's as the first performer to portray Ronald McDonald, Willard Scott wouldn't get any recognition until 2000, and never any royalties. In his 1982 book, Joy of Living, Scott wrote that the owners of the local Washington DC McDonald's franchise hired him to come up with a burger boosting replacement for Bozo the Clown. A local radio personality at the time, Scott took center stage in a trio of McDonald's commercials as Ronald. Ray Kroc, the man behind the McDonald's we know today, saw the potential of having a mascot. However, he quickly recast the role and Scott was cast aside to receive zero credit. Even after he went public with his claims, McDonald's would remain silent. Beyond a brief acknowledgement, Scott was the first to portray Ronald. The official credit for Ronald's creation went to Oscar Goldstein, one of the franchise owners that tapped Scott to create Ronald to begin with. Scott's role would continue to be ignored until March 2000 when NBC's Today Show aired a tribute to Scott that featured Henry Gonzalez, at the time president of McDonald's Northeast Division, finally thanking Scott for his role in creating one of America's most known mascots. Now, this is where we get a little more serious. Between 2009 and 2020, McDonald's avoided paying over $1.8 billion in taxes. The company used a series of barely legal loopholes and cleverly shifted profits from whatever country they earned them in to low tax havens in countries they didn't. This seems to be especially true overseas, where McDonald's is looking at charges that they stole 1 billion euros from the European Union by sending their profits through Luxembourg, a country barely big enough to even physically store that money. The case centered on allegations which first surfaced in 2014 that McDonald's diverted fees paid by its franchise restaurants to units in other countries, thereby reducing its taxable income in France. French media reported then that the authorities were scrutinizing royalties sent to a Luxembourg subsidiary. McDonald's French headquarters were searched by police in 2016 as a part of the operation. McDonald's lawyers said the settlement did not amount to an admission of guilt, but a judicial agreement to avoid a trial. Eventually, McDonald's agreed to pay $1.3 billion in fines and back taxes to settle a tax dispute in France, ending a long-running operation into whether the US burger chain had properly declared all of its income in the country. McDonald's Australia avoided paying half a billion dollars of taxes over a five-year period by shifting profits through the low-tax nation of Singapore. 
The report suggests that the company's Australian operations showing an unusually high level of intercompany payments over the five years had gone to the low tax nation of Singapore. These payments may shift profits out of Australia to a subsidiary in Singapore, thereby reducing McDonald's tax bill significantly, an Australian news report claimed. It said since rent was a separate line item in its reports, there is no known explanation for these payments other than an inflated service fee that serves as a distribution of profit out of Australia. Even Brazilian news sources have claimed that McDonald's regularly bribes tax officials for minor favors. McDonald's Brazil was accused of mistreating its employees and dodging taxes. Union representatives at a local hearing told representatives that McDonald's franchisees in Brazil have denied workers pay for extra time work, not allowing them to join unions and employ teenagers in their kitchens without protective gear, causing some to suffer burns from frying grease and grills. Witnesses at the hearing called on Brazil's Congress to open an investigation into the labor practices of the fast food industry, and these occurrences are also prevalent in U.S. McDonald's. Even as recently as 2023, an investigation in Louisville, Kentucky finally ended after the complaints of underage workers. The U.S. Department of Labor fined three McDonald's franchises after an investigation determined that 200 children, including two 10-year-olds, were working there in violation of federal law. As part of their investigation, officials found that Louisville, Kentucky-based McDonald's franchisee operator Bauer Food LLC hired two 10-year-olds to work at one of its locations, unpaid as late as 2 a.m., with one of the children even permitted to operate a deep fryer, a task which workers must be at least 16 years old to use. The investigation concluded that among the three franchisees, 305 minors were employed, and underage work isn't the only thing happening. McDonald's culture department has faced global scrutiny. In the U.S., it is currently facing a multi-million dollar lawsuit brought by employees over sexual harassment allegations. Its chief executive, Steve Easterbrook, was fired in 2019 after it was revealed he had inappropriate consensual relationships with McDonald's employees. And in the UK, a BBC investigation was told by workers, as some of them teenagers in their first job, are being groped and harassed almost routinely. More than 100 employees at UK outlets of McDonald's allege that they worked in a toxic culture of sexual assault, harassment, racism, and bullying, as well as setting up the investigations unit, McDonald's is appointing external experts to independently examine how workers' claims are escalated. This can mean looking at when and how complaints are passed to other departments or more senior managers. Many workers have alleged that their complaints were not escalated in an appropriate and timely way. McDonald's has replied publicly with apologies and reasoning, but does that ever help? This story has got everything. Revenge. Drugs. Greed. Ronald McDonald. In 2001, the McDonald's monopoly promotion was halted after a fraud was uncovered. A subcontract company, Simon Marketing, which had been hired by McDonald's to organize and promote the game, failed to recognize the flaw in its procedures. Simon's chief of security, Jerome P. Jacobson, also known as Uncle Jerry, a former police officer, stole the most valuable game pieces. Jacobs justified his crime by stating that the game was already rigged in favor of the U.S. rather than Canada, although he did not take any of his stolen pieces to Canada. He began stealing winning game pieces after a supplier mistakenly provided him a sheet of the anti-tamper seals needed to securely conduct the legitimate transfer of winning pieces. Jacobson first offered the game pieces to friends and family, but eventually began selling them to Gennaro Jerry Colombo of the Colombo crime family, whom he had met by chance at an Atlanta airport. Colombo would then recruit people to act as contest winners in exchange for half of the winnings. In 1995, Colombo appeared in a nationally televised McDonald's commercial promoting his fraudulent win of a Dodge Viper. In 1995 also, St. Jude's Hospital in Memphis, Tennessee received an anonymous letter with a Dallas, Texas postmark that contained a $1 million winning game piece. Although game rules prohibited the transfer of prizes, McDonald's awarded the $1 million as a donation to the hospital, making the final $50,000 annuity payment in 2014. Investigations later revealed that Jacobson had admitted to sending the winning piece to the hospital. In June 1996, Colombo's father-in-law, William Buddy Fisher, came forward as a winner with a stolen $1 million Monopoly piece. After Colombo died in a 1998 traffic accident, Jacobson found new accomplices to help him sell the stolen game pieces. Jacobson's associates and those of his collaborators won almost all of the top prizes, including cash and cars between 1995 and 2000, including McDonald's giveaways outside of the Monopoly promotion. 
The associates netted over $24 million. While the fraud appeared to have been perpetrated by only one key employee of the promotion company and not by the company's management, eight people were originally arrested, soon growing to 21 indicted people, including members of the Colombo crime family. By the end of the criminal prosecutions, 53 people were indicted, of whom 48 pled guilty. 46 in pre-trial plea agreements, and two changed their pleas from not guilty to guilty during trial. McDonald's severed its relationship with Simon Marketing, and each company filed lawsuits against the other for breach of contracts that were eventually settled out of court. The case brought forth by McDonald's was dismissed, but Simon received $16.6 million. Four of the putative winners convicted of fraud had their convictions reversed on appeal on grounds of a constitutional violation as they did not know Jacobson and thus did not know that the winning game pieces were necessarily stolen. Jacobson pleaded guilty to three counts of mail fraud in federal court in Jacksonville, Florida and served three years in federal prison. But the trial began on September 10, 2001, but was overshadowed in the media by the September 11th attacks that occurred the very next day. In August 2018, 20th Century Fox announced plans for a film based on the Jacobson fraud with Ben Affleck attached as a director, Paul Wernick and Rhett Reese as writers, and Matt Damon in an acting role. While there have been no further updates on the plans for the film, the controversy has been depicted in the 2020 HBO docuseries McMillions. And that's all I got for you today. I covered what I thought were some of the most crucial and interesting topics, but I'm sure you can find even darker stuff the deeper you dig. I also try to keep these kinds of videos mainly informational and not too much based on conspiracy, but I'm sure we could deep dive into some of that if that's what you guys wanted. And as always, thank you all for watching. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Tell me what you think. Give me video suggestions, anything. And I'll see you next time.